Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today we're going to be making some bubble text or balloony type text in Cinema 4D and it's very easy setup uh, to get this kind of nice really bubbly text. Uh, so a lot of it's going to be uh, made cool by how you uh, texture and light this stuff. Uh, but I'll show you how you can set up your text and basically the, the setup that I'll be showing you is you can basically use any kind of font uh, you want and just set up a few little settings in a Motex object and uh, get this really nice curvy uh, bubbly kind of text and then I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can go and even make it more bubbly and show you how you can inflate it and deflate it like a balloon using Cinema 4D's uh, soft body dynamics. So let's just go ahead and jump in and make some bubbly candy text. All right, so let's uh, get into our scene here. And the first thing we need to do, obviously, is get some text that we can bubble bubbleify. And uh, so we'll get a mo text object. And I'm just gonna choose the letter E for E J. And uh, let's make that centered in the middle there. And what we'll do is we'll choose another font like Comic Sans. No. No, no one uses that. No one uses Comic Sans. No self-respecting graphic designer uses that. Let's go all the way down to uh, Universe 65 Bold. It really doesn't matter what font you use because th this technique is going to be able to kind of make your text nice and uh, bubbly no matter what with uh, the methods uh, that I'll show you. So we have our text and you can only get so far with the fillet caps and all that stuff. You, you really can't round it all that much. We're always going to have this uh, linear uh, extrude right there. And basically, the only way you can really get it rounded is by just shrinking the depth there. Uh, but then you still have these sharp edges here. So let's, let's uh, undo that. <clears throat> so typically, when you want a smooth geometry, you're going to go up here and you're going to get your subdivision surface. You're going to throw your object underneath that subdivision surface and you're going to get something really cool like that. You render it, send it to a client, you're done. Now that looks like crap. So uh, what we actually need to do is uh, kind of change things around. And the first thing we're going to need to change is this intermediate points. So right now it's adaptive. Uh, and if I just turn off that subdivision surface there, you can see that we really don't have any uh, intermediate points uh, to really give it geometry to help smooth or uh, to help define uh, surfaces because the subdivision surface basically just smooths out and rounds out uh, between points and lines. So you can see that everything is very chunky because of this. Uh, and let's just turn off our subdivision surface there. So what we need is more geometry so we can make this way more smooth. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to change the intermediate points from adapted to subdivided. Now what this is going to do, you can immediately see that we have a lot more subdivisions and more geometry along our letter here. So the nice thing about subdivided uh, for the intermediate points is you can have full control over how many points show up. So you can have them controlled by the angle between points. And since this is a fairly linear letter, uh, let me actually just get a different letter here just to show the subdivided stuff in action. So you can see that as this angle goes down, we're getting more and more edges. Now we don't need, we don't want a ton of edges. We just need enough to really define the shape that can then be smoothed out uh, by the, the edges get smoothed out by that subdivision surface. So you can control this by angle and you can also control this by the maximum length or the maximum length between points. So as I crank this up you can see uh, this maximum length is basically controlling how many points are between or what the length is between each point. So you can see that my maximum length is fairly large. So we're getting these big uh, long lengths between our points that make up our text spline here. So you can control this and you want it just a little bit 
a little bit chunky because you want it smooth, but you want enough of that geometry definition that when you turn on that subdivision surface, it kind of smooths it out. And right now we're getting this kind of junky stuff going on and we can actually get rid of that by one of two, doing one of two things. One is changing the type on our subdivision surface from Catmull Clark Engons to just Catmull Clark and that'll get rid of that. Or we can actually go into our Motex object, go into our caps and change this uh, caps type from Engons to quadrangles and that'll get rid of that. So it's just a way to add more geometry to the face of our uh, text to kind of smooth out that face and add more geometry and it won't get all junky from that subdivision surface. So the next, so we're still stuck with the same issue where uh, we still have this flat linear extrude, uh, but we rounded our corners and stuff, but we still need this kind of bubbliness this arc at the top that we're not getting uh, and you know this is kind of what we want to see but we also don't want to just be limited to just a small uh, extrude depth so what we're gonna do and this is I'm not sure when this option came along uh, I think it was just pretty recent with uh, R16 or so uh, but this create single object if you click this click and you get rid of some of these steps here. You can see before and after. So that's uh, without the create single object, and this is with create single object. So what that basically does is this Motex object um, kind of is internally separating caps and uh, the extrude, and it's not completely a joined object yet until you either enable this option or you go ahead and I think this is how you would do it go and throw it into a connect object yep and that'll actually just weld those the cap and so the cap pieces of the geometry as well as the extrude piece of the geometry weld it together as if it's one piece of cohesive geometry and then that'll help smooth out those edges you can get this nice rounded top there to really create this nice bubbly text. So for those of you with older versions of Cinema 4D, uh, what you would do is just throw your Motex into a connect object, but if you have a more recent version, and I believe it's it might be as new as R16, I'm not entirely sure, but this create single object is, uh, is very handy and basically does the same thing as the connect object does where you get this nice uh, roundedness right there. So once you actually do that, you can go ahead and you can still play around with this maximum length for your intermediate points. So say you don't want uh, the edges to be that rounded, say you want more definition, you just bring back some of that maximum length there. And you don't want to get too crazy with that because you can see some of those little uh, pinches start happening in your actual geometry there. So I think 30 is pretty good. You can of course increase the depth here and you can go ahead and uh, jack up the radius of your fillet caps. So now we really have a really nice piece of bubbly type and if we throw a texture on there and just render that, you can see that we're getting this really really nice bubbly candy kind of text. So a lot of this is also dependent on what kind of textures you put on this stuff. Uh, but it's just really, really cool, really fast way to get a uh, nice bubbly cartoony kind of text. Uh, and again, you can put, uh, you know, flat cell shaded materials on this and get really nice cartoony type title kind of stuff. Um, so not only that, so once you have this all set up, basically you can choose any other letter and just plop it in and you'll also have all of this, all of those settings intact. So you can make a title really quick, like a bubble title, uh, just by duplicating the Motex, or just, you know, if you just want, uh, just put a whole entire word in here, and just render that out, and we got this really nice bubbly title. Uh, so again, you can change the the depth, all that good stuff. Uh, one extra thing that is kind of cool and I'll kind of let this render out a little bit here so you can see what this stuff looks like. Uh, but what you can actually do on top of all the settings 
in the MoText object, if you actually want it to be a little bit more bubbly, uh, a little bit more uh, like balloony kind of looking text, uh, what you can do is I'm going to stop that render. Let's just go back to our S here. And let's go and let's bring the radius of our fillet caps down a little bit. Uh, it's looking good. Let's go and we're going to first have my environment hidden right here, but I'm going to get my uh, HDR studio stuff and I'll place a place a dynamics tag a collider body on the floor. And I'm not sure if I need to place it on those two. Uh, and then I will place a uh, so the nice thing about using the low poly geometry on your MoText and then smoothing everything out is I can then go and put a dynamics tag on this and the simulation will be very fast because our geometry is very light. So what we can do is actually make this into a soft body. So we got our MoText as a soft body. And I'll just rename that and I'll enable my subdivision surface going to go into my soft body settings and so if you if you don't know much about soft body I'm not going to go too in depth but basically all these springs is how many bouncy kind of springs make up the structure of your object uh, and if you bring these down it's just a faster simulation but it's a little less exact uh, so kind of like just general dynamic settings uh, and then you also have stiffness that kind of controls the shape so maybe we want a little bit of stif stiffness there uh, but the really cool thing and where you can really have a lot of fun with is this pressure right here. So if I hit play, you can see that automatically uh, my, my object kind of falls down. And it's actually a really, really cool simulation. And again, it's so, so fast because we're using, we have this tag applied to our, our very light, low poly text and then getting smoothed after the dynamic simulation. So this is very handy. So say we want this uh, object to just kind of stay put and we just want it to kind of fall and smush a little bit. So we're just going to bring up the follow position and rotation so it will stay in that upright position and then just kind of that soft body and the gravity will just kind of pull it to the ground there. So the cool thing is this pressure option in the soft bodies. So say we want this to be very balloony and like blow up our text here. So we can actually increase this pressure and check that out. We really have this really nice balloony inflated uh, letter here. And the best part about this is you can go ahead and keyframe that pressure. So you can actually have this pressure kind of fill up and blow up your bubble text by keyframing the pressure. So that's really, really cool. So not only can you like inflate it with the whoop, not only can you inflate it with the pressure option here, but you can actually go ahead, let's delete that track and bring this back down to zero. And let's hit a keyframe. And then you can actually give it negative pressure. So you can actually have it kind of like collapse among itself. <clears throat> So there you go, it kind of shrunk down and actually that was a little bit too much uh, pressure there. Uh, thinking of that David Bowie song. Uh, and so we just have everything shrink down. It's under pressure uh, and it kind of just shrivels up like that. So again, you can have a lot of fun with this pressure, keyframing that. Or say you're doing a still and you're like, hey, that, that looks really good right there. Uh, what we can actually do is just delete that <clears throat> and just hit set initial state. So this will be the initial state that it will kind of start the simulation from. Uh, you don't have to worry about the dynamic simulation kind of, let's see if that, yeah. So you don't even need the dynamics on. That'll just be the initial state. Uh, of your object and you can just render that out. So with that nice inflation with the soft bodies, you can get these nice little creases uh, on your balloony text object. So really cool stuff uh, to create balloony type. And again, a lot of this is going to depend on what kind of textures you do. Uh, maybe Nick will pick this up and maybe show you how he can 
uh, light and texture, this kind of stuff, because I'm using all of his soft boxes and all that stuff. But he's he's the master with this. I just make balloony stuff and cartoon stuff, and he can do all the sexy lighting. So if you, if you want that, be sure to hit the comics and bug Nick about that. Uh, but yeah, so that's basically it using uh, uh, just a normal mo text object with the uh, intermediate points here to make our uh, geometry kind of very low poly. And then we smooth everything out with the subdivision surface. And again, if you're, you can see that still this geometry is not too uh, smooth. So if we really zoom in here, it's kind of chunky still. So all you'd have to do is just increase the uh, subdivisions and that'll just smooth everything right out and really uh, enhance your balloony, smooth kind of cartoon text. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, subdivision surface. Uh, again, if you don't have a recent version of Cinema 4D and this create single object, be sure to just throw this into a connect object and that'll basically meld the caps in the extrude together. Uh, and that's it. So I hope you, well, that was cool. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate all the views and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.